Hey guys, this is Russ with Uncle Feather Merchants. We are doing a crash course on spring dry fly fishing, and this one's all about rigging. So jumping right in, we're gonna talk about uh, what's a little bit different from your typical rigging uh, in the springtime that you would maybe be fishing uh, other times of year, especially the summer months, right? Uh, as you've seen, our fly size is significantly diminished from what we would fish during the summer months. We are not fishing 10s, 8s, even 12s. We're still looking at 22 to 14 at the really big side of things, right? So with that, we're gonna downsize our tippet diameter, right? So fish a little bit smaller stuff than we do in the summer. And we're going to lengthen out our leaders, right? And we wanna keep more distance between the fish and us. It's clear conditions, right? We're pre-runoff right now. So the rivers are still low. They're still very clear. Uh, they are warming up. The fish are getting more active, but we need to keep our distance from them, right? We can't fish seven and a half foot leaders, you know, a uh, rod length away, right? We need to have some space and really present our flies. And if we want to present our flies and hand them, have them land softly and delicately on the water and not put down rising fish, uh, we need to do so where the energy, energy dissipates through our leader, extends and drops, right? And so we get a really nice soft presentation with those small flies, allowing them to kind of freely move through those microcurrents uh, that make those trout want to confidently come up and eat, eat our imitations, right? Uh, so with that, I've got three different leaders in my hand that I've been fidgeting with, uh, and I'm going to talk about them. Um, it really depends on your comfort level of what we're going to choose here, uh, and a little bit of what the conditions are. Um, again, with small windows throughout the day, I really want to have myself set up. So next to me here, I've actually got two rods. I've got one that's just my dedicated dry fly presentation rod with one single dry on it, right? Um, I'm a big fan of using our power taper leader right and I will use a nine foot not a seven and a half here um, and I'll probably bring it down to 3x and then I'll extend a big piece of tippet off of that right um, but one of the other really great ones here is the finesse leader and the idea with both of these right um, the reason I like the power taper it's a really long butt section right so I can really transfer that energy coming off my rod so if you're going to be using your five weight for this right or something like that with a larger tip diameter uh, at the end of your fly line, there'll be less hinging uh, with that power taper leader or a trout leader than there would be with the finesse leader. So if you're gonna fish a four weight or a three weight, that finesse leader is fantastic. Um, it's a really long extended, uh, so you get, you get that energy that dissipates as it, as it hits your fly and then throws a bit of slack in there, right? And that slack is really critical when we start doing this. So, so the, uh, the finesse leader is a 13 foot leader uh, meaning you don't have to add a ton of extra tippet to it, right? Um, I'm always adding tippet to a nine foot leader. With the finesse leader, I don't have to put on that much more tippet, right? So I'll put on, if I'm gonna put on the finesse leader, I'll take some of my Performex nylon. I like, uh, if I'm gonna be tying on to 5X or lighter, I like to do a surgeon's there. And if it's 5X or heavier, um, I will tie a blood knot at that juncture. Um, but I'll probably put on the nylon uh, equivalent of what I am going to be fishing, right? So if I'm gonna be fishing really small uh, dry flies, right? I want energy to dissipate before it hits the, the dry fly. Uh, if I fish a really heavy, if I fish like 4X with a 20, right? What I, you can totally do it. And with big fish, you may have to. But what I tend to find is that I'm fishing 4X with a 20, what happens is that energy maintains throughout the whole thing and I will actually crash that size 20 into the water. If I fish that with 6X and it has nothing to do with the fish size, it has to do with my fly size, that energy will dissipate and I'll have this thing that softly flutters down and that slack that falls in there is like, it's needed, right? It's what allows that stuff to move quietly in those microcurrents. And that's why I'm gonna match the appropriate size tippet to my fly uh, and not necessarily to my fish size, right? Um, so with the, with the leader I've got on here, I grabbed our, our power taper trout leader uh, and I did our nine foot. Um, this is our nine foot three X that's on my rod. Uh, and I put on 
um, a small section of 4X, and then I put on about five feet of 6X. And the reason I did that right, again, is that, that slack. Uh, and when you fish it, when, when, when we're fishing it, um, and you'll see in the other video, fishing it, you'll see what kind of slack that throws into the rig and how much more I'm able to get away with as an angler. I don't have to be as good anymore. I don't have to worry about micromending. Throw all the slack into the leader. Um, it softly hits the water and it, you will be shocked. Your line might be ripping down here, right? And if you're staring at your dry fly, it is moving at an absolute dead, dead pace, which is, ab which is great. That's all I care about what's happening here not about what any of my line is or isn't mending, right? Um, so I can get away from having to micromanage mends the whole time and creating drag, right? I've, if I'm gonna land in a, a small window, right, where I've got fish rising and it might be three feet, four feet, um, if it is completely dead through that three or four feet and then it rips out of there, that's great. Um, I'm gonna do that again until I can get one to eat. Uh, with the long leaders, right, uh, having, um, Having a little bit of casting accuracy really helps, right? So you can, you can kind of manage where that goes. Um, and this is where I really like that power taper leader. It's a long butt section, a heavy aggressive turnover section, and then kind of my slack. So you can, you know, if you're, if you have a little bit more wind, uh, like we've got a little, uh, some, some, some puffs today, uh, it's gonna help you kind of turn over that whole rig. Uh, and then that it hits all that slack and it'll dissipate that energy. It's a little different way to rig um, than you might be used to, but I'll tell you in these low spring conditions, it's really great. The other thing from a rigging perspective that's really great that you can do if we are gonna be fishing 20s or something really small to mimic the, uh, the emergent bugs, um, you can fish a larger kind of visible indicator dry and then in line, you know, three feet back from it, have your really small one that, you know, you don't necessarily have to see. If you see a rise in your area, a slow, subtle pickup, um, so you can get your flies out of there. But if they eat, right, you're you're there to set the hook on it. Um, is a is a great little way. The other thing uh, that I really, really, really make sure to do religiously um, is take and and use my floatants to the best of my ability. Right. Uh, one of the things I start with doing before I even grease a fly is I take my dry magic here. Uh, and I put some between my, on my index finger and I take from the end of my fly line and I run it all the way down to that last knot before I have my slack leader, right? So I have greased my entire leader. I want my leader riding really high so it can do this and not get sucked under and bury and then pull everything down. I want everything floating up on top of the surface. That is really critical. I don't mind that last section going underneath the water, right? So, um, there's quite a bit of debate if you're hardcore dry fly angler, do you do nylon, which floats typically higher? Or for really difficult fish, do you choose fluorocarbon? So that last section is actually underneath the water and there's no kind of shadows on some of those uh, coming across those fish from our, water, from our line sitting on top of the water, right? So you can go back and forth between the two. Um, I typically kind of go this way, this way especially you know, on rivers that have a lot of coarse granite, the abrasion resistance of fluorocarbon is awesome. Um, it does mean I just have to be a little bit better about making sure the rest of my leader is riding really high and I keep that slack portion in that small window where those fish are. Uh, and then when it comes to treating my flies, right, depending on what it is, uh, pre-treatment's always critical, right? If it's anything that resembles elk or resembles um, the wing on like a chubby, I will pre-treat with a liquid, always. Uh, and let it dry. And then for my maintenance work, uh, I'm gonna reach for the Shimazaki uh, powder, right? Um, and you can dip your fly in and uh, put it on the magnet, close the lid and shake it up. Or you can get some on your finger and rub it directly into the, the hackles where you want it. Um, it's a bit more accurate placement with your finger and you can really mash it in. The Dunn is great for blueing olives, specifically this time of year in the spring. It's a must have. Uh, and then the other one I really love is the old spray, right? Uh, and I like the spray just because it's fast, easy. And again, I can work it with my fingertip uh, and work it into all those places. I really want it to be for the, my flotation. But like making sure your flies, if they are dry flies and you're trying to present to rising fish, are floating. Uh, one of the things I see all the time from anglers, including myself, is I will let a fly just fish for way too long. And I'm like, why aren't they eating it? Why aren't they eating it? It's coming through, it's coming through. I take three seconds. 
work it in, make it look really nice, maybe regrease my leader. My next presentation, um, and it's because I got a little lazy, right? I didn't want to maintain my flies. It's all about making sure everything's doing exactly what it needs to do this year, um, because these fish, when they're keyed in, uh, are really on that phase of the, the hatch, and you can't get away with slop, right? So making sure you're really dialed, making sure you're tight, um, and a good array of floatants will really help with that throughout the process. When it comes to rigging, especially in the longer length leaders, don't be afraid, right? Try to push yourself beyond what you're regularly comfortable with. If it's seven and a half foot, if it's nine foot, right? Continue to extend that out. You're gonna see the benefits in particular with low clear water and small flies, right? Um, this isn't, I do this everywhere all the time. It is specifically for this style of fishing we do in the spring uh, and oftentimes in the fall, right? Um, but head into the shop, right? Check out these different kinds of leaders, take them out on the water. You will find there is a big difference, right? Uh, especially when you're really focused on presentation uh, and selective fish, your leader is a true extension of your fly line and making sure it is the right kind of leader uh, to match your casting and also to match your fly, um, it'll make a big difference for you out on the water. So go in, check it out. They have the full selection over at Travis.